Hey everybody and welcome back to the Greenwich Homestead. So there's not much going on around the farm and homestead this time of year. I figured today I would just sit down and chit chat with you guys about what I consider to be the top herbs of choice for your medicinal garden and apothecary. First let's take a walk down and I'll show you what the market garden new space looks like that we were working on last week because it's pretty amazing. The pigs, if you remember from last week's video, we moved the babies over to the old market garden and we got the new market garden started to be cleared out and laid and I just wanted to show you guys what the updates look like. Here are the babies and this is the old market garden. As you can see we got some weeds that grew up along where the edges of the garden were that we didn't have the, the tarp which is why these guys are in here but they've been digging and turning and getting all these weeds and crappy stuff out. In a few weeks we will move them to another location and bring the chickens down here to finish the job. So this is what it looked like to begin with. Then we took the skid steer and dug some ruts in the clay, just sifted all of that soil that we had piled up from the pigs working through it, and then spread it back out and used the two-wheel tractor to even the whole thing out. And this is what we ended up with. And this is all thanks to those noisy buggers over there. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me, I want to get into herbalism, where do I start? The first thing I always say is to look personal. What ailments do you suffer from more often than not? What are common things in your household that you can treat and focus on them and figure out what plants work best for those ailments and then study those particular plants. That's always the best way to get started. That way you're not overwhelmed with all of the information out there because there is a lot. Okay, so I decided to move into my greenhouse because it got a little windy out there and it was hard to hear me. My five main plants that I keep on hand at all the times, my five favorites for my personal medicinal apothecary are mother's wart, mullen, comfrey, echinacea, and lemon balm. So those are my five go-to herbs. The main reason why I choose those five is because of their properties as well as their ease of growth in my area and their ease to find. You have comfrey, which is my go-to all around happy plant. And I grow it for many uses. I use it for composting, but I also use it for medicinal purpose wise. I use it to make a salve for putting on bumps and bruises and sprains or the leaf itself. I'll use a fresh leaf to make a poultice to put on broken bones. This is my comfrey patch. It's two plants right here and they are new cuttings this year. I have some more in other places but I moved this batch over to my garden so I can control it and maintain it and use it for medicinal purposes. Comfrey is a native plant to Germany. It has been cultivated in the United States and is in a lot of people's gardens. It's a very pretty plant to look at. It stays green and lush through most of the season, even into the cold weather. It's a really beautiful purple flower stalk that it puts off. So it is a really easy plant to find. It's a little difficult to grow from seed. However, it's very, very easy to find cuttings. And once you have a cutting of a comfrey root, that's pretty much all you need. Just stick it in the soil and a new plant's gonna grow. It is just a wonderful all around must have plant for any gardener as well as any herbalist. I just recently did a video going into a bit more detail about comfrey and all the different ways that I use it. I will link that at the end of this one and down in the comments below. My second plant that I always have in my garden, and this is one that's kind of fun for me because I never plant it, is mullen. Now I've also done a video going more into depth about mullen plant. The main reason why I have mullen is because Again, it is a multi-purpose, multi-use plant. It is a native here to the United States. It has become a bit invasive and you will see it cropping up in places it hasn't been before. It's a very easy plant to identify with how it looks. This is my mullen plant. It's on its second year. And as you can see, he's got these huge tobacco-like leaves and on a long, tall stalk, which at the very top puts off this flower bud which you can see here with some of the flowers open up. The reason why mullen has made it into my apothecary is because it is, again, like I said, a multi-use plant. The leaves themselves, fresh off the plant, are great for diaper rash. They're a great alternative to toilet paper if you're ever in need. Mullen also has a certain aspect to it that is good for congestion. You would take the mullen leaves and you would dry them out and then you would take the person that's infected or has a chest congestion 
and you would basically light the mullein leaves like an incense and allow them to sit in that smoke for a little while. It's going to help break up the mucus in their lungs and help clear everything out. The other aspect about mullein is because the flowers, when taken off of the stalk and soaked in an oil, become an amazing, amazing earache remedy. Well, the third plant that I keep in my apothecary is echinacea. Echinacea is one of the plants that I personally don't grow, and I'm super lucky in that regard because here where we are in central Missouri, you can find purple coneflower growing in every ditch. It's so abundant that I don't have to cultivate it in my garden. It's always good to have some seeds on hand in case of emergency with wild forage plants, but for me, I haven't had to grow it in my garden yet. It is a beautiful plant to grow. If you've never seen an echinacea or a coneflower, it looks like a giant daisy and it ranges in color from pale pink to a deeper purple. The reason why I have echinacea in my apothecary is because cold and flu season. Echinacea is a huge advantage to immune boosting and helping with decongestion, stuffy noses, sore throats, stuff like that. It is a preventative, not a cure. With echinacea, you use the root of the plant and that's gonna be where most of your properties come in. And it's simply just drying it out a little bit and making a tincture out of it and using the tincture to add to your water or just directly under your tongue. <laughs> if you excuse me for a moment, we have an egg being laid. Everybody needs to know about it, right Tilly? the joys of raising chickens, right? The other plant that I like to keep in my apothecary, and this is one that I have established in my medicinal bed, is mother's wart. Mother's wart is one plant that I will always have in my garden and in my apothecary for a particular reason, and that is actually in the Latin name. Translates to mean lion heart, because the entire plant is an amazing health benefit for your heart and for blood circulation. It's gonna help with lower blood pressure, keep your heart healthy. It also, depending on when you harvest and what part of the plants you harvest, is going to be really beneficial for women. Being that it works around the blood, it's very good for menstrual cramps, it's very good for helping with menopause. So with mother's wart, you would use the flower stalk, and again, you're making a tincture out of this plant. I like having mother's wort in my garden because then I can control when I harvest. I'll harvest some of the flower stalks early for my tincture and then I wait until the, the flowers open and the seeds are dropped out and harvest it again for the tincture that I use for my husband. But that makes mother's wort the fourth and one of the more important ones that we have in our medicinal garden. Lastly, but definitely not least, the fifth plant that I recommend every beginner have in their apothecary is lemon balm. Now, lemon balm, most people know because it is actually an herb and you can find it in most gardening centers, sometimes even grocery stores will carry it because it's great for cooking with. It does have a wonderful lemony scent to it as well as a taste. It is in the mint family, so it's a little invasive. So if you're gonna put it in your garden, make sure that you have it in a container or a space that you can control it because it will take over. But what a lot of people don't know about lemon balm is that it's an amazing item to have in your apothecary as well. Especially if you have any issues with cold sores or swollen taste buds or any sores that you develop in your mouth. Lemon balm is generally used as a tincture or you can just chew the piece of plant. Now, a lot of you might be thinking cold sores and mouth ulcers are not actually that common, so why would I have that plant in my apothecary? Well, like I said, it's an amazing culinary herb as well. There are so many different things that you can do with lemon balm in regards to cooking. It is really good in any type of Asian style soup that brings out that lemony taste. I like sprinkling some on my homemade tacos. I also use it in part of my bug spray regimen. So there are several things that go into my homemade bug spray and lemon balm is one of them. It also makes an amazing tea. If you've never had a cup of fresh lemon balm basil tea, you are missing out. It's good hot, it's amazing cold. So there are so many other uses for this particular plant as to why I have it and why I consider it one of the top five plants to have in a beginner's medicinal garden.
There are some other plants that are very common and understood in the apothecary world that most people know of, like plantain and calendula. The reason I didn't put them on my list is because they're a little harder to cultivate as well as to use for medicinal purposes, so this is mainly geared towards beginners. These are my particular top fives that I consider the best place to start for any new herbalist, simply because of the ailments that they cure are fairly common, they're easy to find, they're easy to grow, and they just look nice in your garden as well, which is gonna help you really fall in love with these particular plants. If you have any questions about the different properties and uses for these plants, drop a comment down below. I will respond. If you're just dipping your toe in the water, these are the plants that I recommend looking for, finding, cultivating, and learning all about. It really is an amazing feeling to be able to care for your family with your garden. Not just feeding them, but keeping them happy and healthy. So this is just to get started. If you're going to go full bone into medicinal care and herbalism, I highly recommend finding a reputable source to learn from and go through the courses because there's a lot more involved than just growing the plants and picking the leaves. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you are not subscribed to our channel, please do so. Leave a comment down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm pick me up to get more videos out where people can see them. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. And remember, if you want to see more and catch me when I upload, hit the little bell to get notifications every time that I upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, get your hands dirty.